Rhinos are enormous creatures that give the impression of calmness, but they can become powerful adversaries when threatened. When provoked, these majestic beasts do not hold to a pacifist philosophy. Instead, they use their strength and charge with intent. Come along with us on this wild adventure of three rhino attack stories. Please remember to click that like button and subscribe for more. This incident occurred amid the vast landscapes of Thornvale Reserve, located in the heart of the untamed African wilderness. It was the year 1999, a time when people still had a strong desire to explore the outdoors, and the wild still had many mysteries. Thornvale Reserve, situated in the very center of South Africa, served as a haven for South Africa's majestic but unruly rhinoceros population. Jackson Harris, or Jack, was a seasoned South African park ranger who had devoted his life to conserving these gentle giants. The challenging environment that Jack patrolled was reflected in his rugged appearance, which included deep-set eyes that bore witness to the endless days spent in the wilderness. Jack did not view Thornvale as merely a park. It was his entire life. He was familiar with every nook and cranny of it, including the drinking spots where rhinos assembled and the thorny thickets where they made their homes. Jack's dedication to protecting rhinos won him the respect of his peers in the conservation community and rhino fans from all over the world. Jack learned that a rhino in the reserve was in a precarious situation. Poachers, territorial disputes, and the day-to-day -day challenges of maintaining harmony between humans and wildlife were all familiar to him at this point. He had seen it all, but things were different this time around. There was something about the message's level of urgency that gave him chills all the way down his spine. The sun went down below the horizon, which caused the shadows to become very lengthy across the savanna. Jack started out searching for the unruly rhino with little more than his expertise in a tranquilizer dart gun in his possession. Jack had received news that a runaway rhino had a dangerous attacking ability to avoid being captured. Jack's adventure took him deep into the heart of Thornvale, where he came face to face with the creature. The creature was a giant bull rhino with battle scars that recounted stories of his confrontations with both man and beast. Jack had learned through his training and experience to respect the creatures, to keep a safe distance from them, and to retain his composure in the face of potential danger. However, the rhino's behavior changed when Jack approached it carefully. Its ears fell forward, giving it a sinister appearance, and it dropped its head. Jack was aware of the warning indications that indicated a potentially fatal charge. He was overcome with terror, but he was well aware that he couldn't outrun a rhino. The rhino charged forward like a giant living behemoth with a rumbling roar. Jack shot a tranquilizer dart, but it did not hit its target, and the angry rhino closed the distance between them with terrifying speed. Jack was sent flying into the air after being struck by the horn of the rhinoceros, which caused his heart to race. Jack lay motionless on the ground, his vision hazy as he was beaten and covered in blood. The rhino, who appeared to be content, then disappeared into the thicket. As Jack fought desperately to maintain consciousness, his life was hanging in the balance. After several hours had passed, a search group comprised of his co-workers located Jack, who was barely holding on to life. He was transported by helicopter to the hospital facility in Thornvale, where a group of highly trained vets battled to save his life. Jack survived the terrible confrontation thanks to some miracle, but he would carry the scars from that tragic day with him for the rest of his life. The case of Jack's brush with death acted as a jarring illustration of the wild, untamable nature of Africa's natural environments. The Thornvale Reserve continued its objective of protecting the rhinos and the extraordinary happenings of survival that unfolded inside its confines. This was accomplished by keeping both the rhinos and the adventures in the end, Jack's resiliency and commitment to the preservation of rhinos were not in the least bit disturbed. The harrowing experience of being attacked by the rhino profoundly changed him and imprinted his spirit. Even though he had managed to survive, he had become genuinely one with the wild spirit of the African wilderness, becoming inextricably linked to the magnificent animals he had promised to preserve. The road to Jack's rehabilitation was a sluggish and agonizing one. The rhino attack left massive wounds on Jack's body, but the mental scars were far more profound than the physical ones. While lying in his hospital bed, his thoughts frequently returned to the event that would ultimately decide his fate, 
He experienced it as a recurring nightmare from which he could not wake up. The Thornvale Reserve had no previous experience with an event of this nature. Rhinos were known to be calm and peaceful animals, yet when threatened, they could become dangerous foes. The reserve employees held a tremendous reverence for these beasts, and the meeting that Jack had with one of them served as a jarring reminder of the unbridled power that lay dormant within their gigantic frames. Jack's body slowly started to recover as the weeks grew into months. His ribs, which the violent charge of the rhino had fractured, were repaired by surgical intervention. The wounds caused by the rhino's horn required a large number of stitches, and his bruised face was covered in scars in various patterns. However, Jack was most affected by his traumatic experiences on a psychological level. He would wake up in cold sweats, reliving the moment when the rhino charged at him in his dreams, and the nightmares would torment him throughout the night. Recollections of that enormous beast bearing down on him came flooding back, and the rumbling sound of its approach reverberated in his head. Jack's salvation came in the form of a sympathetic psychologist named Dr. Nicole White, who had offered her skills to the Thornvale Reserve. She was able to assess the severity of his trauma and put forth a lot of effort to assist him in facing it and getting past it. She guided him through the process of regaining his mental power by providing him with strategies to deal with his worry and the traumatic memories that continued to torment him. However, as Jack made strides in his recovery, Thornvale Reserve was presented with a fresh obstacle. There was an uptick in the number of reports coming in concerning poaching incidents in the region. Poachers were becoming brazen in their attempts to steal valuable items, such as rhino horns, which had become a desirable commodity on the black market. Rhino horn was becoming increasingly difficult to obtain. The personnel at Thornvale, especially Jack, were resolute in their commitment to safeguard their rhinos at any cost. In order to counteract the risk of poaching, they increased the existing security measures, set up surveillance, and solicited the assistance of local police enforcement. Jack was anxious to contribute, even though his physical limitations prevented him from doing so. Jack encountered a band of poachers one day while working alongside other rangers to patrol the reserve's boundary. They were hidden deep in the bush. As he radioed for assistance and moved in to apprehend the offenders, he felt a wave of adrenaline course through his body. Poachers are accustomed to risking their lives, as evidenced by the fact that they are armed with powerful firearms. A heated standoff began between the two groups when they discovered they were surrounded. Jack immediately felt a burning ache in his leg as a bullet touched him, and shots rang out around them, but he did not falter at any point. He could soothe the gang until assistance arrived by exerting much effort, and he disarmed one of the poachers. In the subsequent months, the fight against poaching became more intense, but the committed employees of the reserve, led by Jack, maintained their stance throughout. Even though they faced danger regularly, the rhinos in Thornvale managed to retain their toughness. The more time passed, the closer Jack became connected to these regal beings, and the more profound their link became. Jack's physical wounds continued to heal, and the nightmares that had formerly tormented him started to fade away as time passed. His account of overcoming incredible odds served to motivate not only his contemporaries but others all over the world. Jack had been a metaphor for resiliency and perseverance since that terrifying encounter with the rhino. In the end, Jack's brush with death left a lasting impression on him. His connection to the wild spirit of Africa's wildness had been strengthened as a result of it, and he had become even more devoted to the cause of rhino conservation. The scars on his body were evidence of the perils he had endured. Still, they also served as a reminder of the extraordinary connection between humans and the natural world. Thornvale Reserve carried on with its aim to safeguard these fantastic creatures, with Jack serving as the reserve's leader. There was no resolution to the fight between man and beast. Despite this, it was a struggle that needed to be fought. Not only did Jack's redemption consist of the fact that he survived the terrifying attack by the rhino, but it also consisted of his steadfast determination to preserve the natural beauty of Africa's wild regions. The intriguing Azebo Reserve was buried away from civilization in the center of the untamed African environment. It was in 2008 when the African wilderness still kept its beauties hidden, and the Azebo Reserve remained cloaked in vast explorations. Here is the case of Samuel Sam Kumalo, 
a passionate South African park ranger noted for his unshakable dedication to preserving Azebo's unique biodiversity. Tall and slim, Sam had a deep connection with the country he pledged to defend. The Azebo Reserve was a wide swath of wild beauty across undulating savannas and thorny acacia tree thickets. It was a spot where nature's rhythms had been unbroken for ages. The struggle that will eventually engulf the Azebo Reserve began with strange incidents. Rangers began to observe odd rhino footprints that were unlike any they had previously seen. These unique tracks sent shivers down even the most seasoned ranger's spines. The rhino seemed to have vacated its original home for this reserve. Sam, ever curious, felt compelled to discover the truth behind these prints. As the sun began to fall below the horizon, throwing long shadows across the savanna, Sam headed off on his own, following the tracks deep into the reserve. His co-workers advised him to wait until the next morning, but Sam's curiosity surprised him. The night in the African bush was an unnerving symphony of sounds, including the haunting calls of nightbirds, the rustle of invisible critters, and the distant roar of lions. As Sam moved deeper into the thicket, his illumination sliced through the darkness, the rhino tracks becoming clearer with each step. Sam's heart pounded in a bit of clearing surrounded by tall grasses and ancient trees. He discovered what he was searching for, a big rhino whose hide was speckled with wounds from countless conflicts. The beast was unlike anything he'd ever seen, its eyes flashing with pure ferocity. Fear filled Sam as he realized he was alone, deep in the bush and facing a dangerous foe. He was well aware that while gentle by nature, rhinos could turn vicious when provoked or cornered. Sam moved away gently, hoping to keep eye contact with the rhino, but the giant beast had other ideas. The rhino charged Sam with a swift, thunderous charge. Panic washed through him as he turned and dashed for his life. As the rhino closed the gap between them, the earth rocked beneath its pounding hooves. Sam could hear the rhino's heavy breathing, feel the ground underneath him trembling, and feel his heart pounding. He was well aware that he couldn't outrun the charging beast, he veered toward a dense thicket in a frantic attempt to elude his unrelenting pursuer. The rhino's single-minded charge continued as it plowed through the bush after Sam. Trees splinter and branches snap, resulting in a chaotic nightmare scenario. Sam's heart pounded as he dodged the underbrush, avoiding the razor-sharp horn that threatened to impale him. Sam's body was pushed to its limits due to his desperation. As he emerged from the bush, he noticed the rhino imprisoned among the tangled branches, its fury and frustration palpable. He had narrowly evaded death's grasp. Sam returned to the ranger station, exhausted, injured, and shaking, where his worried colleagues awaited his return. The near-fatal event left him with a tremendous appreciation for nature's unpredictable forces. Sam's wounds healed over time, but the scars from that night remained in his mind. He discovered that the Azebo Reserve harbored rhinos that may have migrated there from another reserve for reasons unknown to them. It could be a famine or something. The clash between man and environment continued to shape the case of the Azebo Reserve. Sam couldn't ignore the feeling that something had altered within him in the following months. The encounter with the rhino had left a scar deeper than his bodily scars. He was pulled to the beast that had nearly killed him by a fascination that enthralled and terrified him. He began to spend his spare time studying the rhinos of the Azebo Reserve, monitoring their behavior, and striving to unravel where the footprints could have come from. Despite their concerns about his safety, his co-workers respected his passion for knowing these fantastic species. Sam saw something peculiar one evening while watching a herd of rhinos graze in the fading light. One of the rhinos, a young female, showed marks similar to the footprints he'd seen that fateful night. Sam intently examined the rhino out of curiosity and a sense of connection. He noted she frequently went towards a particular thicket, one known to be the final resting place of the reserve senior rhino. Sam suspected the female rhino's unique markings, and the senior rhino in the thicket were connected. It seemed as though the elderly rhino was moving closer to the female rhino. Maybe it was its long-lost child or something. Sam decided to follow the female rhino as she made her way to the woods one starry night. He crept, keeping a respectable distance between himself and the juvenile rhino. The air was filled with expectancy as the night fell silent. Sam's heart raced as the female rhino entered the bush. He felt he was about to discover something spectacular that would forever alter his perception of the Azebo Reserve and its rhino population. 
Sam eventually saw it in the thicket, the elderly rhino resting beside the female rhino. It was a unique and uplifting sight, a kinship that cut across generations. Sam concluded that the footprints he had discovered that night were not a sign of danger, but of the rhino community's solidarity and perseverance. Sam's friendship with the rhinos became stronger over time. He became their silent protector, looking over them and defending them from the looming menace of poaching on the Azebo Reserve. His colleagues, who were initially suspicious of his relationship with rhinos, grew to recognize the value of his unique observations. The Azebo Reserve encountered various hurdles throughout the years, but its rhino population prospered under Sam's cautious eye. The unexplained rhino attack that nearly killed him had turned him into a ray of hope for the reserve's conservation efforts. Sam's curiosity had almost cost him his life too, but it had also increased his connection to the outdoors and its awe-inspiring, often terrifying beauty. He continued to patrol the Azebo Reserve, carrying the lessons of that fatal night with him as a warning that Africa's wild nature will always demand respect and humility. And so the saga of the Azebo Reserve continued as a monument to the enduring relationship between man and environment and the wonders that could be discovered deep within the untamed forest. Sam Kumalo's legacy was one of understanding, not just survival, and it would live on in the hearts of those who followed in his footsteps and were dedicated to preserving the majestic rhinos of Azebo. The remote Serenwild Park in the middle of South Africa's vast and untamed wilderness was a shelter for the region's superb rhino population. In 2002, the wonders of the wild still appealed to adventurers and nature lovers alike. Dan Mitchell was a resilient and devoted South African park ranger who had spent his life protecting the rhinos of Serenwild. He represented the essence of the wild African savanna, with a mane of sandy brown hair and piercing blue eyes. Serenwild Park was a wonderland where nature's primal rhythms had played out for millennia. It was in a historically rich location where local stories mixed with the lives of the animals that roamed the vast savannas. Dan has always been fascinated by Serenwild's history. He was aware that this country had witnessed several stories of survival and struggle, both for its animal inhabitants and the humans who fought to protect them. When the unfortunate incident happened, Dan was stationed in Serenwild on a particularly cold night in the heart of the African jungle. A moon cast an eerie glow over the terrain, and the air was filled with the distant sounds of nocturnal creatures. He had pitched his tent near a magnificent baobab tree, which was reputed to provide protection and comfort during the chilly evenings. In the night, a roaring wildfire danced, shooting sparks into the sky. Dan snuggled near the fire, his breath producing white puffs in the cold air. The chill in the night air wasn't the only thing that made him shudder. Unusual tales circulated among park guards, describing a sequence of rhino footprints that seemed to roam at night, leading outside the park into people's homes. Dan, never one to shy away, had decided to look into it. He couldn't shake the feeling of being watched as he sat by the fire. As a ranger, his instincts warned him that something was wrong in Serenwild, something lurking in the shadows. The hours went slowly, and Dan's anxiety increased as the moon rose to its highest point. He knew he was alone, but a sense of doom hung thick in the air. The campfire provided little solace as he carefully watched his surroundings. A gigantic figure emerged from the darkness, a massive rhino with eyes that glittered with unfathomable intensity. Its body was scarred from prolonged conflicts, and its horn was a powerful weapon crafted by nature herself. As the rhino neared Dan's campfire, its pace was deliberate and methodical. He knew rhinos were normally gentle giants, but this one seemed in a terrible mood. In the eerie glow of the firelight, Dan recognized that the rhino was very dangerous. The rhino was a representation of Saren Wild's vast creatures. Panic gripped Dan as he raced to his feet, attempting to extinguish the campfire to avoid agitating the rhino. However, it was too late. The giant beast surged forward with a strong sweep of its horn extinguishing the flames. Dan's heart hammered as he hurried into the darkness, the rhino hot on his tail. The rhino zigzagged through the savanna. His breath strained, but his resolve remained firm. It seemed as though the land itself was conspiring against him. Dan noticed a tall marula tree and scrambled up its branches frantically to survive. With the rhino close behind, he clung to the upper branches, his body shivering in terror. Undaunted, the rhino rushed at the tree, its gigantic bulk trembling the ground with each booming step. Dan's heart leaped into his throat as the tree's roots gave way, 
causing it to tumble over and send him crashing to the earth with a sickening thud. Dan lay wounded and injured as the rhino delivered the final killing blow. His eyesight dimmed, and he realized his life was on the line. But just when everything appeared to be gone, a chorus of voices rang through the night. After hearing his distress call, a rescue squad was immediately dispatched to the scene. They were loaded with tranquilizer darts and had a determined expression on their faces. They aimed and threw a dart that hit its target in a split second. The potent sedative coursed through the rhino's veins, causing the big beast to falter and its charge to halt mid-flight. It collapsed to the ground, breathing difficultly and slowly as it fell asleep. Dan was carried to safety, injured and broken, but alive. He had escaped the terrifying rhino attack thanks to the quick thinking of the rescue crew. He glanced at the rhino, now quietly sleeping as he was hauled away from the scene. Due to the terrifying incident, Dan was left with both physical and emotional wounds, but he also revered deeply for the nature and the living creatures there. Saren Wild Park remained a magical location where rhinos wandered freely and whispered through the whispering grass. The rhino, Saren Wild's guardian, remained a symbol of the untamed beauty that could still be found in the middle of the wilderness in South Africa. Dan's incident became popular among Saren Wild's park rangers, a monument to the trials and tribulations of those who committed their lives to preserving the wild. His encounter with the rhino reminded him that Africa's wild beauty demanded respect and empathy. As a result, the wonders of the wild continued to unfold in the heart of Saren Wild Park, enticing adventurers, nature enthusiasts, and park rangers into their embrace. It was a site where the past and present collided, where the relationships between man and nature were tested and reinforced, and where the memory of those who nearly sacrificed their lives for the sake of conservation lived on motivating future generations to safeguard and appreciate Africa's untamed wilderness.